Now, ladies and gentlemen, the first document that I'm going to show you is the one that shocked me perhaps the most. Here is a document which I couldn't possibly believe was on the level myself when I found it in the Library of Congress. That's where I got it. Here is the photostat of it right here in the form that you get it from us. This is one of the pamphlets with all the photostatic documents. This one is a full-page article from the London. You can cite it yourself and get it from your own library if you don't want to send it to me for it. Here's the citation. London Illustrated Sunday Herald, February 8, 1920. At the time of the Russian Revolution, or right after it, page 5. Here is the full page available to you so you can see it all. Now, I can't read it all. I haven't got time. I'm going to take some selected portions. I'm going to first give you the title and what it's about. The title is Zionism versus Bolshevism, a struggle for the soul of the Jewish people. And the author, ladies and gentlemen, is a man that there is no person in this audience can say is a bigot or a fascist or a Nazi. The author is the right honorable Winston S. Churchill. In the case somebody would say it's the Churchill who runs the garage, another Churchill, that runs a garage down on 3rd Street, here's his picture, and you can judge whether it's the right Churchill or not. In this article, he says the Jewish people are dividing up into two groups. One group, he says, is for Zionism, and they want to take Palestine away from the Arabs who's had it for 2,000 years, and he thinks that's great. This is what Winston Churchill believed, and he says Zionism is good, and these are religious Jews, and we should give them Palestine. Well, so much for that. That's what he says up to here. But he says the other half of world Jewry is going another way. Here he talks about international Jews, and I would like to read you, not George Wallace or Adolf Hitler or George Lincoln Rockwell, I would now like to read you the words of Winston Churchill on the Russian Revolution, ladies and gentlemen. Please listen carefully and see if you are not as shocked as I was because you have never heard this sort of information. I never did. In violent opposition to all this Zionist sphere of Jewish effort, rise the schemes of the international Jews. The adherents of this sinister confederacy are mostly men reared up among the unhappy populations of countries where Jews are persecuted on account of their race. And sh parenthetically, surely you all know the Jews were persecuted in Russia. He says, from the days of Spartacus Weishaupt to those of Karl Marx and down to Trotsky in Russia, Bela Kuhn in Hungary, Rosa Luxemburg in Germany, and Emma Goldman in the United States, this worldwide, and this is, his, this is Churchill's definition of communism, and I think it's pretty good, this worldwide conspiracy for the overthrow of civilization and for the reconstitution of society on the basis of arrested development, of envious malevolence, and impossible equality has been steadily growing. Now, remember, he's talking about the international Jews. Now, listen to this. Here's the shocker. It has been the mainspring of every subversive movement during the 19th century. And now, at last, this band of extraordinary personalities from the underworlds of the great cities of Europe and America, not Russia, this band of extraordinary personalities from the underworld of the great cities of Europe and America have gripped the Russian people by the hair of their heads and have become practically the undisputed masters of that enormous empire. Here was Winston Churchill indicating to me that all of these people he named from Marx to Rosa Luxemburg, Bella Kuhn were Jewish, and he says the Jewish confederacy all over the world have seized the Russian people by the hair of their heads and become the masters of the Russian empire. In other words, he says the Russian revolution was not Russian, it was the capture of Russia by Jews who had been persecuted, rose up and took the country away. That's what he says right here in the article. Anybody who says, oh, send for it. Read the whole article. I've got a few more pa paragraphs I'd like to read you. He says, there is no need to exaggerate the part played in the creation of Bolshevism and in the actual bringing about of the Russian Revolution by these international and, for the most part, atheistical Jews. It is a very great one and probably outweighs all others. With the notable exception of Lenin, the majority of the leading figures of the Russian Revolution are Jews. Moreover, the principal inspiration and driving power comes from the Jewish leaders. Thus, Chechen, a pure Russian, now listen to this carefully because this is the system they use in the United States. This is the system they're using all over the world right now. When people say, why, there's no Jews running communism now, listen to what Churchill says. Thus, Chechen, a pure Russian, is eclipsed by his nominal subordinate, Litvinov. And the influence of Russians like Bukharin or Lunikarsky cannot be compared with the power of Trotsky or Zinoviev. In other words, he says, at the top level, they have a Gentile who is a front. 
And right under him, they have the Jewish leader who is the real driving power. That's not Rockwell speaking. That's what Churchill says in this article. Remember the two names he says? The two guys that are the real driving power? Litvinov and Trotsky. That's what he says in Article 1. Now I'm going to show you another document, this time from the Jews, not from Mr. Churchill, but from the Jews themselves. And I can't tell you how shocked I was when I began to follow this up. I started checking on Mr. Trotsky and on Mr. Litvinov to see who are these guys. So there's a book put out by the Jews called Who's Who in World Jewry. I'm sorry, Who's Who in American Jewry. That's the title, Who's Who in American Jewry. I have here a reduction of the title page, Who's Who in American Jewry. Now, remember, haven't you folks always been told, and didn't you believe, as I did until I was over 30 years old, I thought Jews were just a religious group. If you are a Jew, you believe in Judaism. If you abandon Judaism and deny it and become an atheist, a fanatical atheist, and attack religion, you certainly couldn't be a Jew if Jews are just a religious group, could you? This is what the Jews told me. They said there can be no such thing as a communist Jew because Jews are a religious group, and if you become a communist, you're no longer Jew. That's what the ADL says, and I believed it. So the Jews put out a book called Who's Who in American Jewry, and who do they list? Who is his picture right here? But Leon Trotsky, and we find out his name is Bronstein, and he was a Jewish tailor from the Lower East Side of New York before he went over there to Russia to run the revolution. There's one of them. Remember the other guy we said, Litvinov? Imagine how shocked I was to discover it. Litvinov, that sounds like a good old Russian name, doesn't it? Well, it turns out that he's one of the tribe. His name is Finkelstein. Here he is, put out. Now, listen, I, this isn't stuff from me. This is stuff from the Jews, published by the Jews as a directory of great Jews, American Jews, and they list the two leaders of Russia as American Jews. Doesn't that surprise you? It did me. Now, the next one, the next one, ladies and gentlemen, here's another one. You may say, well, that was quite a while back because that thing was published in 1938, 1939. Here's one that just came out two years ago. It cost me 35 bucks to get it, but boy, was it worth it. It's called Who's Who in World Jewry. Now, this is the real authoritative list of the real top Hebrews. Let me give you the... <laughs> let me give you the list, ladies and gentlemen, of the Jewish organizations. I can't read them all. I'll pick a few out. There's about 100 organizations listed here as the sponsors of this authoritative list that says of the great and biographic dictionary of outstanding and noble Jews of the world. Let me give you some of the people, the American Jewish Congress, the American Jewish Committee, the American Jewish Historical Society, Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith, B'nai B'rith, the Hillel Foundation, I bet you got one right here, ask them. <laughs> Canadian Jewish Congress, Central Conference of American Rabbis, Jewish Theological Seminary, and there's about a hundred of them here. They say this is an authoritative book, a list of Jews. On page 29, ladies and gentlemen, what we do we find in the authoritative list of Jews? Herbert Apthecker, the chief theoretician of the Communist Party, his daughter Bettina runs the riots on the hour and the half hour out there at Berkeley. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the proof from their own pages, from the Jews themselves, that they consider a communist, atheist Jew as one of the tribe, as one of the boys, even though he's attacking religion. I didn't put him in there. Can you imagine a, a book called A Directory of Great Christians? listing George Lincoln Rockwell as one of us, or Adolf Hitler? Not yet, not for a while. You will see the day that that will be in, but right now everybody's too scared. People are scared of these Jews, so they don't do it. But the day is going to come when we'll list our good boys in there too. Now, before I go on from this subject of communism and Jews, I want to show you another document here. Here is a document, these little ribbons. I've left this ribbon outside of the glassine cover so you can see what it is. This one is a document obtained from the U.S. archivist, Wayne C. Grover, signed, sealed by the United States. To fake this up would be forgery. It would be a prison offense. Here is an intelligence report by your G2, by your intelligence people, right after the Russian Revolution, to the American government and to the War Department and the President as to the nature of the Russian Revolution. Remember, this is one of the documents you can get from me and study for yourself and see whether I'm misquoting it or whether it's misrepresenting. I would like to read one section here where it says the composition of the first Russian government, the commissars and the first Soviet. Here is what the, it shows, the intelligence report shows it was made up of. This is the government of Russia right after the revolution. It was made up of two Negroes, 13 Russians, 15 Chinamen, 22 Armenians, 
and more than 300 Jews. Does that sound like a Russian government to you? Now, in case that isn't clear enough for you, this guy who was at the time, this has been de declassified, but when he wrote this, this was a classified document, so the guy let himself go a little bit. Listen to what he says. He says, it is probably unwise to say this loudly in the United States, but the Bolshevik movement is and has been since its beginning guided and controlled by Russian Jews of the greasiest type. <laughs> now, can you possibly have any doubt what the guy is saying, what he means, that this is the Russian Revolution wasn't Russian, it was Jewish? But to tell you that, to tell you that, ladies and gentlemen, I got to face violence and force and all sorts of insults and derogation in order to tell you, even if it's wrong, don't you think the right way to deal with this thing is in the form of a formal debate? Don't you think there ought to be a confrontation? If I'm wrong, don't you think the Anti-Defamation League or the Hillel Foundation should supply an expert so that he and I could stand before you and we both present our sides and you judge? They won't do it. They never have done it. They keep saying, we won't degrade ourselves with arguing with Rock. Well, I don't wonder. When I've got documents like their own who's who in world Jewry, what are they going to say? That's why they tell you they wouldn't degrade themselves to come up here. They won't use the old-fashioned American method of con confrontation. I accuse them, and they keep calling me names. They won't discuss the facts. All they keep doing is trying to punch me in the nose, calling me an mf -er like out front here and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody's going to stop me. Nobody's going to stop me from preaching what's in here because he threatens to punch me in the nose or because he calls me a dirty name. I am not convinced because somebody has the brilliance to be able to say mf -er to me that he's a genius and has better facts than I do. <laughs> if that's true, all these guys down here in Watts are the smartest guys in the country because they use that word all day long. Решение о национализации этой библиотеки было принято советским правительством, первым советским правительством, и членами его являлись примерно на 80-85% евреев. Но они же, руководствуясь ложными идеологическими соображениями, шли тогда на аресты и репрессии и иудеев, и православных, и представителей других конфессий, мусульман. Они всех гребли под одну гребенку. И вот эти идеологические шоры и... Э, и ложные идеологические установки.